In Lilia Kaganowski's essay, Film Editing as Women's Work, she states that to this day, no one has attempted to recreate or recompose the cinematic landscape of Soviet cinema, or to make a case for the Soviet women filmmakers who have been ignored or marginalised by subsequent film history. In light of this, I aim to reconstruct fragments of one of the best-known yet under-researched female editors to have worked in the USSR, Elisaveta Svalova. In a porous and lacking documentation of Svalova, a female editor whom despite having been heralded by all the best Soviet directors at the time as a brilliant master of editing, her contribution to documentary film history has largely been subsumed by the male directors and self-proclaimed auteurs which surrounded her. As Gaines writes, female editors fell out of the limelight and then out of the film history itself during this productive period of Soviet cinema. One of these auteurs was Falova's husband and collaborator, Ziga Vertov. It was in 1922, whilst Falova was managing the editing workshop at the state cinema known as Goskino, that she met Ziga Vertov. Some of the greatest documentary films of the early Soviet period came to fruition during their partnership. This arsenal of work includes Man with a Movie Camera. In the 1929 film, we see Svalova playing herself, while she watches, sorts, remembers, selects, and composes strips of film. Art historian Eva Diaz writes that Man of a Movie's camera's exposure to the very construction of the process of editing the film lends itself to a correction to the absence of the female artist's hands in history of art. She expresses that Svalova's hands, shown to us via the film's reflexivity, are agents of change, connecting images to one another by physically positioning them in particular orders. Diaz goes on to saying that this kind of labour is self-driven and creative, unlike how women pictured historically tend to be occupied with domestic tasks. Diaz's observation of female domesticity in the historical representation of women in art history is useful for us to consider when analysing the innovative role of editing as women's work in documentary film history. Scholar David Newell expresses that the suitability of editing, or cutting as it was originally called, for women was due to its similarity to female handiwork such as sewing and weaving. Svalova's husband, born Denis Abramovich Kaufman, was inspired by the Italian futurist Filippo Marinetti and in an ode to their glorification of speed and power, found in their manifesto of futurism, he took on the pseudonym Ziga Vertov, a term that can be roughly translated as spinning top. Film scholar Seth Feldman expresses that in Man of a Movie Camera, Vertov was looking for peace with man and machine. There are many stylistic and thematic hybridisations in Man of a Movie Camera. The most cogent of these to observe in regard to editing as women's work is the montage of shots of women cutting hair and filing nails interspersed with shots of Svalova gluing strips of film. The combination of these images unequivocally reinforces the gendered nature of editing in early documentary film history. Furthermore, this sequence includes shots of Svalova editing, whilst considering the minutiae of every frame. This insight into the construction of Man of Movie Camera, its editing, is shown just after a shot of a woman sewing fabric at high speed. The speeding up of these images creates the illusion that the subjects are working at superhuman rapidity, a technique which Vertov used to shock the viewer into empathy with the industrial age. However, these images, albeit commensurate with the glorification of technology, seemingly confine women's editing as an auxiliary role, the problematization of which is most evident in the gaps within the documentation of Solova herself. In an interview carried out by Anthony Lambert, Karen Perlman, a filmmaker and scholar who created what she describes as a stylized biopic about Svalova, titled Woman with an Editing Bench, explores how the feminization of editing is counterproductive. According to Perlman, this is because the traits that are often associated with editors, such as diplomacy, quietness, reclusiveness and problem solving, are stereotypically associated with the feminine. And despite, as Annette Michelson expresses, Svalova being an outstanding example of the interesting and innovative development and realisation of careers for women in a cinematic tradition, its feminised status is symptomatic of our gendered and subsequently limited remembering of female editors in documentary film history. Mikhail Kaufman, whom, unlike his brother, kept his surname, was also the cameraman for Man of a Movie Camera. Together, Vertov, Mikhail and Svalova formed the Council of Three. In an interview of Kaufman, he expresses that the shooting, his given role within the production, is what dictates the material in a film. Probing him further, the interviewer asks, and Svalova? To which Kaufman responds dryly, Svalova was an editor. 
She spliced, distributed material and made selections, but she was an assistant editor, not a co-author. Mikhail Kaufman's repudiation of Svilova as a co-author is frustrating on multiple levels. First of all, as Kaganovsky in her film editing as women's work seminar delivered to students at New York University, when asked, I wonder if the central theoretical issue that you're talking about is collaboration, she answers, Collaboration is feminine by definition. Women collaborate. Men become genius. People have argued it's too incoherent if you try to talk about all these figures. Whose film is this? People often look for just one figure. And as such, it's important to disrupt the individualistic and generally male-centric notion of director's author. Otherwise, as proved by Kaufman, female editors are reduced to the auxiliary role of assistant. Perlman expresses that we need to stop saying that good editing is invisible, because it makes editors and women invisible. Perlman's collaboration with fellow scholars McKay and Sutton in their essay Creative Editing, Svalova and Vertov's Distributed Cognition, lends itself well to the undoing of the invisible mythology of editing. The article aims to recuperate Svalova's position as creative contributor to what are known as Vertov's works of genius, by showing that their editing processes are the expert work of a distributed cognitive system. In other words, Svalova most certainly was a co-author, and the proof of her collaboration was, as Perlman, McKay and Sutton argue, in her visible recorded case of a creative epistemic contribution. Defined by scholars working in the field of the human mind, such as Andy Clark and David Palmer's, epistemic contributions are actions performed to uncover information that is hidden, or hard to compute mentally. Svalova's creative interventions and epistemic actions are shown to us in Man with a Movie Camera. An example of this is when we witness Elisaveta editing two disparate pieces of film. As film scholar Ken Danzinger writes, the craft of film editing is the joining of two pieces of film to yield a meaning that is not apparent from one or another shot. In other words, Svalova's editing isn't merely what Kaufman was describing as self-contained acts of splicing, distributing material and making selections. But Svalova's epistemic acts of editing are key to understanding her cinematographical language. An example of Svalova's emotional syntax, achieved through editing, is evident in a sequence in Man of a Movie Camera, where shots of seemingly obsolete strips of acetate are filmed, only to be edited by Svalova, begin to create a narrative such as the boy whose ecstatic smile upon being brought into the world of the film almost nods to the seemingly magical process of bringing an image to life via ingenious editing. In his discussion of editing technologies in film history, Versavis writes that holding the film with one hand in front of a light box, as we see Svalova doing here, was an editor's preferred way of viewing material rather than watching it being projected. Although due to the lack of evidence, it is impossible to demarcate the exact ratio of work between Svalova and Vertov during the production of Man of a Movie Camera, there are some remarkable and intricate notes in which Vertov developed the theme of a transition between one set of eyes to another, in the narrative of Man of a Movie Camera, and describes a sequence in which the editor, described as Svalova, would become what Perlman, McCain, Sutton allocate as a perceptual hub capable of observing and organising the perceptions of the cameraman and of personage within the film, as well as her own. This notion of Svalova as co-observer, and thus partial co-author, during select moments of the film's production process, makes it all the more difficult to answer Kaganovsky's question. How do we begin to see where the work of the director stops and her work begins? as the interchangeability of Svalova as both an editor and co-observer obfuscates her individual contributions to Man of the Movie Camera. However, the problematization within Svalova's creative interventions aren't the exact number of interventions she made, or the potency of her stylistic choices, but the disparity between Vertov and Svalova, whose seemingly self-effacing status as an incandescent figure in the innovative field of editing as women's work has been, and largely to this day still is, ignored and marginalised by film history. After her husband's death in 1954, Svalova became Vertova Svalova in an ode to her late husband's memory. If it weren't for Svalova's indefatigable pursuits to save her husband's work via preservation of archive, Vertov would not be remembered today as one of the greatest Soviet filmmakers of his generation. Perlman, McKay and Sutton have described editing as similar to playing a game of chess, where each of the pieces of the film and their visual contents have a kind of autonomy that the editor must take into account whilst fashioning the film out of the game of montage.
So I ask, when looking at man with a movie camera, remember to consider who is beyond the image because if you don't pay attention to the very construction of the film, you might just miss the game the editor is playing with you, fashioning the material by organising, sorting, gluing, fusing, and as such making its moving image possible. Elisaveta Svalova creates a work of art out of raw material 